coming out of the book of Judges, the Bible dives into a book of the Bible called Ruth. Ruth is a short book of the Bible. It's four chapters, and really it covers the life of a few people, but primarily focuses on this woman named, you guessed it, Ruth. And Ruth is an interesting story because Ruth is not... Um, sometimes we hear her name and we think that she would have been a Jewish woman, possibly, that she would have fit this certain mold or she would have fit this certain picture. She was actually a Moabite. She was someone who was grafted in to the nation of Israel and into covenant with God. And she was someone who, we will find out later, was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. It's an incredible story that God shares with us and really God's at work all throughout this book of the Bible. I know that it's going to minister to you. It's ministered to me. Ruth 1, chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. The reason that that phrase is used is because there was no king. As you see in the book prior, in the book of Judges, there were judges that God would rise up throughout the various tribes to help to keep peace in the land. There was no quote-unquote king. It says there was a severe famine. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. They left their homeland to go somewhere else to dwell because times were tough. This man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. Naomi will be a key character in our story as well. This is Ruth's mother-in-law. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. So all that was left was the three ladies. You have Naomi, the mother-in-law, and then you have Ruth, and you have Orpah. We don't know how this took place. What's interesting is it tells us the name of the two sons. We don't even know um, which of the women were married to which sons. We just know that the father and the two sons passed away over a period of time and that the three ladies were left together in the culture and in those times. This would have been very challenging for them economically because a lot of times land was linked, depending on the country, land was linked to the male, land was linked to the, possibly the family. There were certain professions that only certain people could do and they probably were in a very tough situation which led them to make tough choices that we'll read about as we go along in the story. Verse 6, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. So basically things were not going well in Moab. Naomi didn't really have a reason to stay in Moab anymore. She told her daughter-in-laws, hey, I'm going to head back to Israel. I'm going to head back to the homeland, if you will, because I've heard that God's stopped the famine and that God has really provided for his people. Verse 7, with her two daughters, in law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Judah was one of the 12 tribes. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show your kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Basically, she says, hey, go back home to your parents. Go back home and find a husband. Go back home and start over, start fresh. You know, basically, she was saying, you know, I'm older. I'm not going to get remarried. I'm not going to have more kids. Y'all are younger. Y'all have an opportunity to start fresh. She says, don't feel obligated to me. Don't feel tied to me. Move on without me. I'm going to go back home. You go back home is what Naomi's saying. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who can become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. I want to be very clear about this. This is what Naomi thought. This was not reality. Sometimes in our life, we might think that God's turned his hand against us, but just because we look at something through a perspective, we might look at things through a wrong perspective, and we'll learn later in the book of the Bible that really Naomi came to the revelation that the Lord's hand was not turned against her. The Lord's favor was actually on her life. At this, they wept aloud, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. It's a significant scripture for us to really read into. It said that Orpah kissed her and left, but that Ruth clung to her. And Orpah made a choice to go back home to her family. Now, in the context of this situation, what Orpah did was not sinful. 
to go back home to her family. She was released. She was going to start over. But she went back home to her family and really in the land of Moab to the false gods and to and really to a lifestyle that wouldn't have drawn her close to the Lord or anywhere near to the Lord. And we don't know this because the Bible doesn't tell us, but it's very likely that Orpah never walked with God because of the choices that she made. Whereas it says Ruth clung to Naomi, and Ruth would make some powerful statements that we're going to read in a moment about how Naomi's God would be her God. Let's continue. Verse 15, she says, Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't tell me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? And Naomi, she goes, Don't call me Naomi. She told them, Naomi means pleasant. Naomi means happy or joyful. She says, call me Mara, which means bitter. She says, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. She's projecting onto God as if he has brought her a cup of bitterness, as if he has walked away from her, as if he has abandoned her. And it really, it's a, something that we can learn from because we sometimes will do that as well. We'll blame God for our situations and circumstances. We'll act like God's walked away from us. When things are great, God's amazing. When things are tough, oh man, I can't believe God walked away from me. Listen, in the good times and in the bad times, God's still your God and God still is with you and God still goes before you. She says, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. She's just sharing her heart. This doesn't mean that this is the truth. It's Naomi sharing her heart in her perspective. So Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the harvest was beginning. When it says as the harvest was beginning, it's setting up the next chapter and what we'll learn in our next video where Ruth will be introduced to Boaz. Boaz would become her future husband, and Boaz in the story is a picture of Christ, a guardian redeemer or kinsman redeemer, your passage might say. And Boaz really shows us how Christ has grafted us in and has given us position in his economy, if you will. And really this, this story primarily revolves around Ruth. But in this chapter, it talks a lot about Naomi, and Naomi shares a lot of her feelings. And I just want to share with you something that's on my heart. Be careful not to get caught up in your feelings and to allow your feelings to dictate your perspective and your feelings to dictate your word choice and what you pers what you project. A lot of times, how you speak is, is how you see reality and how you live. And we need to be careful to speak words of life over our own life, over our marriage, over our kids, over our relationships, over our finances, over every area of our life. Speak words of life. Speak words of faith. Because God is with you. God is for you. You might not see it right now, but even when you don't see it, he's still working behind the scenes. Be blessed today.